I'm Stevie W. I'm Callum. And this is another Mando Watch, and we are now on episode number 13, The Jedi. Very appropriately named. Yes. Uh, well, not episode, chapter 13. I have to get it right. Films are episodes, TV's chapter. So, The Jedi, what did you think, dude? Oh, uh, well, it's gone back from uh, the last episode, so a little bit of filler to back on the main story now and gee, wow like just the live action debut of um seeing ahsoka fantastic and and there actually was rosario dawson as well so yeah we got like but it's just i mean this is dave filoni has directed the debut of the animated and live action version of her now so there was no one else that could have really done it i think i completely agree with you there i mean i was doing the reading up isn't it Ashoka Tano is a creation of Dave Filoni and George Lucas. Yes. So, it is only fair that he's the one that brings her into the world, like you said. And yeah. I found out, you know, I play this game where when I see it, and I watch it, I'm trying to figure out who it is, because I'm waiting for the Robert Rodriguez episode. And uh, I was like, as soon as I saw Rosario Dawson and uh, Michael Bain. I thought this is good. Oh, I, I, my first reaction was Robert Rodriguez, but I kind of had it spoiled. I, went, I made the mistake of going on social media and a thing, <laughs> and Kevin Smith paid tribute to Dave Filoni and uh, and Rosario Dawson. I was like, ah, she's in it. Then yeah, I just switched it off. In fact, I thought, okay, but uh, yeah, brilliant episode. I was gonna say, I love the lightsabers. Yeah, uh, the, the white ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's supposed to be a, a neutral Jedi. She isn't good. Uh, she isn't light or dark. She's her own person kind of thing. It really worked perfect, and and the opening was very cinematic. You know, I thought. Yeah. When I was watching, I was like, I could sit down and watch this movie. Yeah, you know, definitely. I mean, just when I saw Michael Bain, I just thought, oh yes, <laughs> I I can't believe I got like. Is it, it, it was kind of like, um, have you ever seen Tombstone? No, but I know of it. He's like a gunslinger in that, and he kind of reminded me of, of that in this. Like, he's a sort of mercenary, wasn't he? And he even uses a line that's similar in that, where he says, like, my fight's not with you, Mando. Mm -hmm. He basically says to Val Kilmer, like, oh, I ain't got a grudge with you, holiday. Yeah. And I think it's supposed to be a reference. But, um, yeah, no, I, I love Michael Payne and anything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, for me, he, you know, some people he's Kyle Reese. And, yeah. Uh, to me, Hicks. Hicks, yeah, yeah, definitely. So, aliens, for those who who don't know what we are on about. But, or the uh, the sheriff in uh, Planet Terror. <laughs> yeah, that's one. That's uh, another thing which we are going to do. If, as soon as all this lockdown's over, we are doing the. We'll be continuing with our Tarantino watch with that one. Yes. And. Uh, so yeah, we can go. In, we are going into spoiler territory on this because there's a rule that you know because it airs on the Friday that by by the Monday, and this is across the board. Spoiler, we can go into spoiler territory because if you haven't watched it by the Monday, and you know we it's, it's definitely we're past Monday as recording anyway. Uh, I like the way that we're going. You know, I thought the first season was more western, and we are going to. I mean, the opening one was a western, but the whole samurai element to it, especially the battle at the end. I thought I thought Kill Bill, you know the one with Morgan Elspeth. Yeah, who interestingly is Dan Eno's daughter. Who's? Who? He's a student of Bruce Lee's, oh, and he does a lot, a lot of martial arts stuff, like behind the scenes for actors and that. Oh, cool. He's the guy. Um, he's in a lot of Steven Seagal films. If you know, in Out for Justice. Yeah. There's a guy he fights dicks. Yeah. He's called Stick. Yeah. That's him. Ah, oh, nice. Got Bruce Link there as well. Yeah. No, come on. You, Bruce Lee is like the highest of the high when it comes to martial arts movies. You'll never, you'll never top that. Yeah. So, but uh, nice. Rosario Dawson then. Yeah, I thought she was fantastic. She, she, like, because if you watch the Clone Wars from the start. And then into Rebels as well. Like you, you sort of see Ahsoka growing up. She's she's like a, I think she's supposed to be like a teenager in Clone Wars. And then when you see her again in Rebels, she's sort of 
she's an adult but in this like i like it it's gone beyond like the original trilogy now so obviously she's even older so she does look sort of grizzled and like a veteran almost like you know she's been in the wars and yeah, really good casting actually i think they haven't made a foot wrong with the casting yet. no I mean, for me, I like Rosario in the, you know, she's in the Marvel Netflix series, so I love her from that. And, uh, and she was in Zombieland, uh, Double Tap. Yeah, she was, yeah. So, uh, in Clerks 2. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> she's good in, oh, she's good in Clerks 2. I, 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 I just think she's, she's superb, I really do. I, you know, uh, so having her in it. Uh, the Mandalorian himself, you know. But I'm watching this episode. I mean, he, he don't get me wrong. Pedro Pascal is is been brilliant throughout the whole series. Yeah, perfect. But when I was watching this world, I I just thought, you know, for a guy that's under a mask, he does emote a lot. He does, yeah. And like the it's just the, like almost like head nods, and it reminds me a lot of how they sort of make Michael Myers emote. You know, like in Halloween, like where he obviously can't, he doesn't talk even, so. They have to use movement, and I th- I like that. With, it's the same, like with Dread as well, where you, you know Carl Urban emotes with his chin. <laughs> but it, it, it's a testament to the actors and the, the yeah. direction, and you know that that to do that because it's it's not that easy because you, you don't see the no. eyes, no, and you don't you don't see any expressions on the face. Like you said, they, they're performing under masks, and for them to actually yeah. convey emotion. Just with these nods and everything, it, it, it's superb. And you, you say Michael Myers. I mean, in the 2018 Halloween, I mean, it's superb. It's superb. And a lot, of, and you know, you you won't see awards being given to them for their performances because they just see yeah. someone under a mask. Okay, I've, I've got a little uh, thing. You got the, the mention of Thrawn. You probably know more about him than I do because I know not much because he's expanded universe. He's a rebels guy now as well. So. He is actually officially part of the, the canon now. So um, if you watch Rebels, he comes into it season three, four-ish, like the last two seasons. And he's kind of like a... He was in the Expanded Universe originally because he's, he's like a blue guy in, in the Heir to the Empire books when they first started it. But they, he was always like a fan favourite even when they decanonized it. So I think um, when they made Rebels, they sort of said, well, let's make him a proper character, but in our universe... Because the uh, the HK droids as well that they use in that town, yeah. they have his seventh fleet symbol on their arms. Ah. So he's they're obviously like his old. Yeah, no, but um, it's worth watching Rebels just to you don't need to know it, but it's nice to just sort of catch up on the because it, it also give you a, a, a hint of why Ahsoka's out in the middle of nowhere looking around. I saw the last episode. I lost. Is it Clone Wars? I saw the last season. Oh yeah, the last four. Episodes. Yeah, I should watch the entire season because it was actually good, and I will go back to it. But I can't really watch it until I start watching Game of Thrones because everyone keeps going over Game of Thrones. No, no, you can't. No, so, <laughs> it's on my on my watch list. It is, and but something really hit me. You know, because uh, I'm I've been you know since when I watched it. Don't remember. I think Dave Filoni did a fantastic job. And uh, can I just I give a little shout out to? He's an in episode of the Chef Show on Netflix. When uh, John Favreau and Roy Choi, Chef Roy Choi, cook, and you got John, you got uh, you got Dave Filoni in it. So that's my shout, my shout. Out. But the, the opening episode, the, the, the John Favreau one, it, it, yeah. you know, with the the Boba Fett armor, and the is he isn't he to murder Morrison and Boba Fett at the, the end. And it got me thinking because I've got a soft spot for that episode. You know, because you know, seeing the the armor, of course, R five D four, the Banthers, and everything. But for my generation, you know, seeing that armor, it was like just superb and knowing that Boba Fett is out there. And I was just yeah. thinking, you know, uh, to a new generation, the younger generation is the one that actually the kids that are now growing up, that grew up with the, the prequel trilogy and did the uh, Clone Wars and the Rebels. Is that with Ahsoka Tano, is that exactly like what Boba Fett is to my generation? Because that kind of makes it, if it is, it makes it kind of interesting. Because how one character can resonate with one audience and another with an audience, but they still bring it all together. Yeah, I, I, I think that's reasonable. But Ahsoka is also, you know, when you get the, the audience character, 
you know, like um, like Winston in Ghostbusters, or yeah. like they're they're us, they're our entry point. Ahsoka is always like that for me in Clone Wars. Like this is this is us being taken into this like this galaxy where there's Jedi and Sith, and and, and she like every most episodes were about her sort of realizing things and you know learning to become more Jedi or or whatever, but. Uh, yeah, no, I think she's she's like a she's like a really she was always a really good entry point character, and they've taken. I don't think they expected her to be developed as far as she got because she was such a favorite. But because it's Dave Filoni, she's so well written anyway that you don't mind the fact that they've let, had her last this long. She, I mean, she, she was good, and that's all. Uh, the, you know, the, 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 the uh, design. You know, one thing I love is you know when you've got those. I mean, they've got those little tentacle type things coming from their heads, and how yeah. they always use a nice little thing to the, it hides the seams with this prosthetics. I always love yeah. looking how they do it and how well that they do it. And, and it, I thought with Ahsoka and Rosario, she was just I think Rosario was awesome, stunning anyway. Yeah, she, she 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 like the makeup was done really well as well. I was I was a bit when I heard that Ahsoka might be in this season, I was a bit sort of like. I don't know if some of the animated characters would work being live action, but they've nailed it, and she looks fine. She doesn't look like stupid or anything. I was worried about the makeup looking a bit funny, but it looks fine. Who works with Twilix? It does, yeah, yeah. Anyone that doesn't yeah. know Twilix, those ones with the tentacles like Bit and Ula and Ula who gets from. Yeah, Rambo. she's um she's supposed to be a species called Togruta, which is like a, an offshoot of them because they still have the. The Leku, I think they call them, yeah. the tentacles. Sorry, that was way back in the geeky expanded universe case. <laughs> what did you think about the um, the child's real name? Grogu. I wrote it down. Yeah. Did you want to know, or were you, did it not bother you that much? It doesn't bother me he's got a name. He has no. a name. I mean, they still sort of don't know what's... They still say... I've only ever seen this this type of creature once before. They don't say the species, which I, I don't ever want to know what it's called. I don't want to know the species, but you get people out there you know, that don't want to pander to it, because there's a lot of people out there that want to know the species. They want to know how it happens. People want to know, that, you know, everyone likes to be spoon-fed. You need a bit of mystery, though, don't you? Yeah. You know what? I've gone 40 years without knowing what species Yoda is. Yeah, and, and it still doesn't... Does it bother me? Yoda. Yeah. Uh, which, which, which reminds me, you know, the other thing that really got me a bit emotional is, you know, when she's talk when uh, Ahsoka's talking about uh, Yoda, and you hear uh, a bit of Yoda's the, theme. I, was, I noticed that. I, I was, I got a bit emotional, and it's, uh, it's, it, it's the same thing with, within Episode Eight, where they do the same thing with Yoda, you know. Uh, like all the stuff that was going on and everything, you know, the baggage that the film had, just that Yoda and having his theme being played again was just was, was spot on and it, it it worked the same. But little Grogu is so cute. I'm sorry. Oh, I love him. I, I like the callback to like the first couple of episodes when he steals the the gear knob off of the yeah. the well, I don't I think it's a like a joystick, isn't it? But yeah, he's just he's a little shit as well, isn't he? <laughs> gets it and yeah the bit where you think that maybe that was i thought at one point that was going to be the end of the child's arc he was going to go off and then amanda would be doing his own separate thing for the rest and it would, but when cause you got that whole they got the little fake out with the him saying goodbye to him and letting him sleep and you know going back to what we said earlier about emoting from under the bucket is mm. uh is uh, and i thought that was that was superb and but the thing is, uh, okay, I'm going to just go on to the geeky territory. Uh, obviously, Yaddle from Phantom Menace was no longer part of the council, then uh, but Ahsoka would have probably known about Yaddle from when she was a young I don't know, because was she was she gone in episode two, Yaddle? Yaddle was, yeah, which was episode one, she was on the council. Yeah, so Ahsoka didn't join as Anakin's apprentice till the Clone Wars died, so she may not have ever seen her. But she would have still been an apprentice at the temple. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I don't really know, because obviously when episode 1, 2, and 3 came out, she hadn't been created yet, yeah. but I don't know the the backstory of, of her life as a kid, I don't know whether she was taken, like, Anakin older, or whether she was, yeah, she may very well have, but like, it's like, um, 
it's like Star Trek though, isn't it? When with with the whole thing with Chekhov not being on the Enterprise with in Wrath of Khan, and yet he recognizes him. Like people, you could just sit there and go, "Well, he might have been just walking around on the decks or something." Like that. <laughs> it's the same sort of thing, isn't it? You don't know. Does it she might have been there and just forgot because she was so young. Yeah, another thing is, you can't hold it 50, and because the age is slower. And yeah. There's reference to how you went through a few masters, and so that would have mean that at one point Ahsoka would have come into contact with him. Yeah, definitely. And I, I'm at, I would imagine one of those masters was probably Yoda, wasn't it? Yeah. So there's still a lot that oh god you know what this is gonna people are gonna be like oh is it yoda's son and yeah, fucking no. piss off because <laughs> the universe is so small that we have to focus on one set of characters i've got like we've got this, the door open for should they just decide they want to see a, a, a jedi that's hiding out uh as far away doesn't want to train anybody so they could yeah. theoretically go there if yeah. they choose to, but why would they want to go there? Cause no, I mean, I like that she said something about, was it a planet called Tython? Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I've never heard of that planet before, so I hope it's just going to keep it. I mean, if they're, if they're on about taking him to the top of the temple, there's going to be some sort of vision, isn't there, or something. So, I don't know, we might see a force ghost i don't know but it wouldn't bother me if we didn't you know it'd be nice just to keep this story self-contained that's what's been one of its strengths so far i mean we've had guest characters but it's always been the mando show definitely i think with ahsoka they were testing the water to see if they could go somewhere with her yeah i mean they're probably i sort of felt like a it was a backdoor pilot yeah definitely. a little bit maybe like, like I kind of felt like that with Picard, that they would do a Seven of Nine series because of her character in that. I, I, I'm just going to go slightly off subject because we, 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 we might get lynched by some of the old school Star Trek, Star Wars fans. But I just want to say, I hope with Picard, they, 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 they don't want to keep the way that they're doing Picard. I like Picard. Yeah. We we'll have to do a podcast on that one as well because Picard is actually a bloody good TV series. Yeah. Do we lose? Do we lose our Star Wars point? Do we lose Star Wars points for actually saying that? No. <laughs> you can be you can be multi franchise now, can't you? Yeah, but you got to remember. I watched Fanboys recently, and it's they say no, no, no. <laughs> I love Fanboys. Yeah. <laughs> Check out Fanboys, it's actually good. It's, it's good, you know, it's great to really Star, Star Wars, Star Trek, and yeah. It is, it's, but it's really clever as well, isn't it? Like, it's not just a, a piss take, it's a, it's a well-written sort of satire, isn't it? Like, I mean, I every time I see Patrick Stewart, all I can think of is that he's British, not gay. Yeah. <laughs> and if you watch it, you'll understand what oh, we mean. Oh, yeah. How can you get it? I, I'm, I'm William Shatner. It's, well, uh, it's very quotable. It is. Oh. It is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I got it. You know, it was one of this one because I wasn't impressed by last week's episode. So for this one, I was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. It was good. I was just literally sitting there, was, yeah, and the and the visuals are fantastic. Yeah. So, I like it. I like the. At least I, I like the whole. I like the way that. The, the whole samurai thing and the way that we're going very cinematic and everything I think that's just that's just spot on and you know it, it's traditional Star Wars for me that is yeah and the gunfight with him and Michael Bain was pretty cool as well just oh, I, I just knew he was going to try and one up him when he was putting his weapon down yeah. I, I I hope that, that, that this brings a, clear, a career revival a bit for Michael Bain now because he's good he is. He is good. Uh, uh, I, him and Bill Paxton, I always think of them together for some reason. They're probably good they, aliens. But they are. They mean they've been Terminator together. Not they don't share a son, yeah. but they are. Because Bill Paxton, if I'm right, is the first person to get killed by a Terminator. He is, yeah. And yeah. You got uh, you got of course you got Michael Bane who's Kyle Reese, and they're together in Aliens as Hudson and Hicks. 
Yeah. <laughs> Hudson's Hicks. Say again? Hudson, sir. He's Hicks. Yeah. Oh, oh, this, we, 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 we will be doing an Aliens thing eventually. So, uh, where we yeah, go? definitely. Because Aliens is a bloody good film. And so, that's it. Okay, ranking out of five. Oh, I think this is another five. I think, like, the first episode, it's... They've introduced another character from before really respectfully and well done. And it didn't overshadow the rest of the episode, which I liked. Like the Boba Fett thing didn't. Like, they were teasing and teasing with the armor, and then finally at the end there's a reveal, but nothing else. And that's the way to do it. I do. I completely do agree with you on that one, because I think last see, uh, chapter 12 failed because it was more of a secondary characters episode. I always call it the Star Trek Beyond one. But this one, yeah, five stars. And uh, it was good, and it was good seeing. Uh, something I have, I have got to touch on uh, is that the the honor between Ahsoka and and Amando. I thought that yeah. was superb. How that they both have this moral code and they stick to their moral code. He wasn't yeah. going to take the money yeah. to, to kill her. He was going to, you know, he used that. He used the woman to get find out where he used uh, Morgan Elstead to find out where to get to the Jedi. So he could do his task, which is deliver the child. Yeah. Grogu. Grogu, yeah. Grogu. I'm still going to call him the child, though. <laughs> yeah, it's so much easier to call him the child. It is. So, uh, yeah, five star. I completely agree with you on that one. And so, coming up, we'll have the chapter 14 soon. So this is Mandalorian Watch. I'm Stevie W. I'm Callum.